Bienvenidos and welcome to another episode of Spain on a Fork. First things first, today's New Year's Day. I hope you all had a great time out there yesterday. You're staying safe and healthy, but most importantly, that you're ready to tackle on the new year. Anyways, with that being said today, we've got the perfect recipe to kick off 2024. We're talking a classic Spanish lentil and potato stew. And let me tell you, this dish truly represents what the Spanish humble kitchen is all about, as it's made with very simple and affordable ingredients, effortless to put together, where there's no tricky techniques or expensive equipment needed. And the best part, it's all done in just 40 minutes using one pan. Folks serve this delicious stew next to a crunchy baguette, a garden salad, and of course a bottle of Spanish wine. From the wine region of Utiel Requena, you're going to have yourself a fabulous meal. Alright, let's begin by getting our ingredients ready. I'm going to cut two medium-sized potatoes that have already been peeled, washed, and patted dry. Each went to bite-sized pieces that are two centimeters thick, which is about three quarters of an inch. To make this recipe, important to use potatoes that are a bit more waxy than starchy, as they hold their shape better in stews. I'm using Yukon Golds, but you can also use new potatoes, golden light, or even red potatoes. We'll also finely chop one small onion, roughly chop four cloves of garlic, and cut two slices from a baguette, each one being two centimeters thick, which once again is three quarters of an inch. And for the final ingredient, we'll add in one cup of dried lentils into a fine sieve and rinse them under some water. For this recipe, I'm using green lentils, which are very similar to brown lentils. Either way you go, when you're working with dried lentils, you don't have to soak them in water like other beans. You just give them a quick rinse and you're ready to go. For the next step, let's start cooking our dish. I'm gonna heat a stock pot with a medium heat and add in three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which is 45 milliliters. After a couple minutes, we'll add in the slices of baguette and four cloves of garlic with the skins removed. And we're gonna cook these ingredients between three to four minutes or until they're golden fried all around. Once the ingredients are golden fried, we'll remove them from the stock pot, transfer them into a mortar, and then set them aside. Now using the same pan with the same heat, we'll add in the chopped onion and the chopped garlic. And as always, we'll mix the ingredients around continuously, that way they all evenly saute. After three to four minutes, and the onion is nice and translucent, we'll add in two teaspoons of sweet smoked Spanish paprika, which is about five grams, and one teaspoon of ground cumin, which is about three grams. And we'll give it a quick mix, that way those spices are evenly mixed into the garlic and onion. As always, the Spanish paprika I'm using is from Kiva, link where you can get some in the description box below, and if you buy from that link, you'll also get 25% off your order. Then we'll add in half a cup of tomato sauce, which is 120 grams. I mean my sauce by finely grating fresh tomatoes, but you can also use canned tomato sauce here, or even passata. And we'll give it a mix until it's well mixed together, and then simmer it for a few minutes without mixing the mixture. After three to four minutes, and the tomato sauce has slightly thickened, we'll add in the chopped potatoes, the one cup of dried lentils, which by the way is about 200 grams, and five cups of vegetable broth, which is 1200 milliliters. To make this stew, you can use other liquids, such as chicken broth, beef broth, or even water. Either way, recipe on how to make my homemade veggie broth in the description box below. Then we'll add in one bay leaf, turn it up to a high heat, and give it a gentle mix. Once it comes to a boil, we'll place the lid on the stock pot and lower it to a low heat. And we're going to simmer this between 20 to 25 minutes until those lentils and potatoes are just cooked through. In the meantime, let's move back to the mortar with the slices of fried baguette and garlic. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley, which is about eight grams, and pinch in a kiss of sea salt. And using a pestle, we'll pound down on the ingredients 
until we form a paste-like texture. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, no big deal. You can also use a food processor here, a handheld blender, or even a Nutribullet. Okay, let's move back to the stew. After 20 to 25 minutes, I'm gonna remove the lid. And at this point, those lentils should be perfectly cooked through. Important to check the package instructions in the lentils that you're using. And as for the potatoes, you can use pierce one with a toothpick and if it easily goes in there, but with some resistance, they are ready to go. For the next step, I'm gonna add in the bread and garlic mixture and season everything with sea salt and freshly cracked black pepper. And we'll give it a gentle mix until everything's well mixed together. And like I've told you in the past, when you're working with dried beans, you always want to season them at the end when they're fully cooked. If you season them beforehand, it's going to take them longer to cook and they're going to end up with a tough texture. Then we move the stock pot from the heat and transfer some of the stew into a shallow bowl. and we'll garnish with fresh parsley. Check it out, lentejas con patatas, a classic Spanish lentil potato stew. Simple and affordable ingredients, super easy to make, and truly the kind of food that's gonna fill you with so much goodness. Let's give it a try and see how it turned out. As always folks, now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see how this lentil tastes, and I tell you the aromas in the kitchen are absolutely amazing. Here we go. I'm telling you, what a way to start 2024. Like I told you at the beginning, uh, this dish truly represents the humble Spanish kitchen. We have simple and affordable ingredients. I got so many flavors out of this. All the ingredients are beautifully cooked and that thickener really takes us to the next level. Once again, serving this next to a crunchy baguette, a garden salad, and a bottle of Spanish wine from the region of Lutierra de Cana, you're going to have yourself a beautiful meal. Really quick before I go, a shout out to a couple of my patrons, Dr. Michael Barvitz, Jesper Haloum, Jim Owens, and Clarence Bolin. Again, guys, thank you so much for being patrons of Spain on a Fork. You know how much I appreciate you. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. Leave me a comment below. And as always, don't forget to share this video with your family and friends. That way our Spain on a Fork community can continue to grow. Till the next time. Hasta luego.